way here. Oh well. No, it drives me nuts. Hope I'm live. Yay! 11 o'clock live devotional. Thanks for connecting. Glad to have you here. Look forward to this time every week. So thanks for joining in. Hey, I see some folks connecting. Tuesday live devotional time with Pastor Kara Foster and First Christian Church, Madisonville, Kentucky. And we're glad you're here and taking a moment out of your day to just spend some time to connect and renew. And I hope if you haven't already, you can sign up to receive our daily texts. They're just little brief text devotionals, if I could describe them anyway, in very short amount of wording. Uh, scripture quotes, thoughts for the, thought for the day, um, that number that you can use to text the word Lent to is posted at the top of our Facebook page, and it's on Instagram as well. If you're looking for that number, it's not too late to join. You can get a daily text, and they'll stop on Easter Sunday as our last day. Um, so thanks for connecting. I'll start with a little announcement. So let me see who's here, and I'm missing all my chats. Here we go, down here. There you are. Yay! Good to see everybody, April and Mary and Jerry and Bruce and Donna and Deborah. So glad you guys are here. Thanks for joining and everybody else who is watching right now. I appreciate you taking some time to connect um, to the still small voice of God in the midst of your day. Other announcements I wanted to let you know about is... We just began to start telling the world about how we're going to do Holy Week and Easter this year. Uh, in many ways, there'll be lots of the elements that you're used to and know and love, like our palm crosses uh, that we wear on Palm Sunday. In fact, if you want to volunteer to help make them on the, I believe it's the 27th, reach out to me if you want to know more info about how to, if you want to volunteer to help make those palm crosses. I think I'm going to come and bring one of my kids this year and let them learn how to make it. I think it'd be fun. Um, let's see. And Holy Week, unfortunately, we can't do our uh, lunches as we typically do. So those are on hold um, until next year. But um, the big, big thing is that our Easter plans for Easter Sunday involve going outside. And we um, came to that conclusion because, as you are well familiar with, we have to keep our sanctuary well below occupancy right now. Glad to do that. Understand why we're asked to do that because of health concerns. Um, and we don't want to have uh, an incident of spreading COVID-19 here. And so because of that, we've been trying to think of how we can be welcoming to all to try to make everyone feel as comfortable and as safe to come and worship on Easter Sundays of all Sundays of the year. And so our plan is to do Easter worship outside. Please pray for good weather. We're going to have two worships, 7 a.m. sunrise service at the Columns and 11 a.m. outdoors on our grounds by our community garden. If you came to our summer Vesper services this past summer outdoors, it's going to be in the same spot. It's where we're going to have church. And we're going to have an Easter egg hunt on our grounds for the kids right after worship. So it's going to be a big day. And I hope that might feel be a little safer for some people to come and worship and be a part of church that day on Easter Sunday. So just FYI, the email um, email's been out. We've posted on social media. If you have any questions, reach out to me. And it'll be an Easter I won't soon forget. So um, I hope it'll be a wonderful time. And you know, no matter what, no matter where we are, inside or outside, the message of Easter is always so meaningful. And I don't know about you, but I'm hungry to hear it now more than ever before. And so with that, I want to take us today to Psalm 30. And oh, look at all these names. I'm sorry, everybody. I keep scrolling down and seeing all these names. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you. Okay. So with that, we're going to go to Psalm 30. And this Psalm, a little context this morning, I was um, walking around outside. I went outside to look at something outside our fellowship hall. 
and um, forgot and the door locked behind me. I didn't have my keys and I ended up just walking around the church building while I was doing that. And, you know, I ran into people that were um, dropping stuff off by the preschool. There were kids at our columns doing a um, activity with their teacher. There were kids on our playground and there was just so much life and it's about going to be 70 degrees today. It was just so much life and joy. And I just took it all in for a moment and um, reminded myself that um, it, it's going to get better and, and that hope is always on the way. And, and all the ways that God has provided through a difficult season for so many people. And, and so maybe like me, you might feel at times worn by this road of every challenge that we've been on through COVID-19 and so much more, frankly. And, and so I just offer this psalm today to us all as a, as a thought for the day, because what I think is really wonderful about this psalm is that it's clear that whoever wrote it has certainly been through something, something really bad, something really hard, and they've made it through, and they're looking back in a sense and recognizing with thanksgiving and praises to God that they've made it through. And um, I read this with a lot of hope today of where we are in the world, and I'm going to read two versions to you just so you can hear it in different ways. I think it helps my ears to hear it different ways too. And this is just a NRSV version. I will extol to you, O Lord, for you've drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those who've gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And now I'm going to read from the message, which is a very contemporary language. And let you hear how the message puts it. I give you all the credit, God. You got me out of that mess, and you didn't let my foes gloat. God, my God, I yelled for help and you put me together. God, you pulled me out of the grave, gave me another chance at life, and when I was down and out. All you saints, sing your hearts out to God. Thank him to his face. He gets angry once in a while, but across a lifetime there is only love. The nights of crying your eyes out give ways to days of laughter. The nights of crying your eyes out give ways to to days of laughter. That's Psalm 30. I read about half of the psalm if you're interested in, in going back and looking at it today. And I offer these words to you um, because I just want to know, sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. This is a beautiful day. If you haven't already, get outside and check it out. Um, at least it's a beautiful day where I am in Western Kentucky, but I offer this. I want to hear, and if you want to comment, I would love to hear it from you um, about what, how you're singing praises to God. What, what thanksgivings do you have right now? I have a, one that I, if you want to comment and share with everybody, we'd love to see it. One of the thanksgivings I have is just the renewed hope that I'm hearing from public health officials and medical workers about this pandemic and where we are headed and vaccinations and and predictions about summer and fall it just gives me a lot of hope and so i i offer thanksgivings for that today it's just it does my heart good to hear good news in the news every now and then so that's that's what's um giving me hope and thanksgiving and um you know the other thing is just these sunny days to have sunny days and to get outside and and to know that spring is really going to happen 
and to see those little blooms coming up out of the ground it's just a wonderful to reminder it just fills my spirit too it's a simple thing but it works so anybody else have any thanksgivings any praises you want to offer today on this day mindful of where you've been and how god has carried you through like this psalmist is i would love to hear what what you have to share um how God is providing for you in your life today. And I, I think there's so many ways that we just don't often take notice of the blessings and the gifts in our lives. So whether it's as simple as your sweet dog or grandchildren or chickens running around in the yard, whatever it is, I hope you'll take some time today to to give thanks and to offer praise for the ways God has carried you through in your own life. So I don't, oh, I see a few comments. Oh, yay. Thanks, Sharon. Gives me hope every day. Amen. From April, I'm thankful to be picking my grandchildren up from school four days a week, waiting in prayer for the day it becomes five. Amen, sister. <laughs> It fills me, it fills me with joy to drop them off at school. Uh, thankful for sun and warmer weather. Yes, me too, Fran. It just fills my spirit for family and friends. Thank you, Ed. Absolutely. You know, there's always what's that quote? There's always, always something to be grateful for, and I don't want to dismiss the the suffering and loss and the grief that so many are experiencing, but. Um, I don't want to lose sight of the good either. And I'm grateful for the ways that God is providing. These are all wonderful things. So um, when you need a little reminder today, I just invite you to check back with Psalm 30. Sing praises to the Lord, faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I hope you find your joy today. Wherever you are, whatever you're up to, I hope you find joy for the gift of this life and the gratitude that we need to give to God. Oh, babysitting a grandchild today. There's something to be thankful for. That's wonderful. Oh, yes. Job and preschool. I could. Oh, my gosh. I'm so grateful for that. That's awesome. Thankful, thankful. All those, you know, our preschool here, they've all been working with those, those little kids through this whole time. And um, I'm so grateful that they've had opportunities to get vaccines now to help protect them. Spring and new beginnings. Amen. It's true. Fills me with a lot of hope. And I love being around church and, and seeing the life that's still there springing up all around us. So it's wonderful. Well, let's get ready to pray, everybody, and um, if you have a prayer concern and want to share it, feel free to comment, and we'll pray with you on that. I want to remember prayers for um, sweet mem church members that are both named Joyce, so please remember two Joyces. One's in Lexington, one's in Tennessee. Pray for them right now um, as they face what they need to face and for health and wellness. And we pray for the Bachman family who are grieving the loss of Joe, whom they love so much. If anyone else has any prayer concerns, feel free to share. And I'm going to remember some of these Thanksgivings as we pray, too. Um, so, I don't see any other comments, so let's get ready to pray. Wherever you are, just find a little, a little quiet, a little peace, and just turn with me in prayer now. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for the gift of sweet grandchildren and for spring and new life. We thank you, God, for a church family, for new jobs, for health and wellness, mindful so often how we take it for granted. We thank you, God, for friends and family. We praise you for the gifts of our lives. Help us to have eyes and ears and hearts that recognize it and come to you with thankful hearts and that joy may meet us in the morning. But we lift up prayers to you for healing, for joys and joys. You know their needs, God. We pray for them. We pray for the Bachman family in their time of grief and for 
all of us who grieve the loss of someone they love. We pray for peace and for strength in the midst of it all. And we are mindful for the needs of our world of hunger and violence and war, for children living in unsafe homes. God, we pray for your church that it might be strengthened and our witness everywhere will grow. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Oh, Donna, thank you for your offering your prayer concern. I wish I had seen that. Prayers for you. Thank you for sharing that. Donna, prayers for the stent tomorrow. You are a tough cookie lady. And I know you have to be, but we're praying for you too. And for Ed and for Priscilla, who's still living in Panama right now. That's hard. So thank you, Ed, for remembering her. And for all the, your good friends and ministry partners in, in Nicaragua. So thanks, everybody, for connecting with us today. Spread the word on our Easter plans and happenings. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I appreciate everybody being as flexible as we've been. COVID has taught us anything. It's how to be flexible. And um, that's a good thing. I'll give thanks for that. So take care, everybody. It's great to be with you. I hope you have a great day. Do something fun outside today. See ya.